So how's everything been coming along? Everything has been going pretty well um, with my LSAT journey. I am currently registered for the August LSAT. So I already took it once. And so this is going to be my second retake. And I'm hoping this is the final retake. I'm hoping this is the final retake. My second time around, I definitely feel um, more confident. I The classes have definitely been helping. Um, I kind of like re structured my um my study plan and i've incorporated like timed practice tests because before i was just doing the practice test untimed and i was reviewing that and i wasn't and i think like a part of that is like also like anxiety when it comes to time constraints and so i wasn't even practicing under timed conditions and so this time i made it a point to make sure i practice under time conditions so i can get used to it you know and then be able to finish the exam in time with more with time to review. Because the first time I took my exam, I was like pressed for time for every section. And I had to, I ended up guessing on some of the questions. And so that's the that's one of my goals. My goals is to one of my goals is to avoid that on the second retake and to also practice with time, like under time conditions, so I can improve on my speed and accuracy. Fantastic. It sounds like yeah. you've got a great plan there. I'm glad to hear how everything's progressing yeah. so nicely. It's awesome. Is there yeah. any particular challenge you're facing right now where you could use some support? Um, definitely, yes. <laughs> um, I think with my biggest challenge, like the section I'm having the most trouble with, um, but like seeing very little improvement each day is reading comprehension and a huge part of that is just you know just having ADHD and being able to focus and analyze information in a way that's productive right so when i um am reading over the reading comprehension passages it's kind of like i'm thinking to myself oh my gosh i don't have enough time And so I end up glancing over very important information. So when I get to the questions, I'm like skipping around because I have no idea how to answer the question. And so my biggest challenge would be trying to, I guess, know how to read effectively and efficiently without, um, I guess, without psyching myself out to the point where I just, I don't feel like confident or comfortable answering the questions because I don't have a, an overall understanding of the passage. So maybe like little help, like helpful tricks and hints, you know, Absolutely. that would help me conquer this section. Yeah, yeah. We need to keep you engaged yeah. while you're reading yes. the passage in the first place. Mm-hmm. So if we can give you something to hold on to and just focus on that, the details, mm-hmm. you can gloss over them. You can always come back to them later. So one thing we've mm-hmm. done in the deep dives, and we still do this in Reading Comp Express, is focus on only a passage or two and go over it in depth, focusing mm-hmm. on what's the main point, what's the author's right. opinion. Everything else, you can just note it to go back and find it when you need it later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I've joined, um, I think I've had three Oh man, I think I'm I've, losing connection. You said you've joined three. Yes, I've had I've um, attended three of the reading comprehension sessions. Oh, fantastic! That's great. So that's that's where you'll see it demoed, and you can watch the recordings mm-hmm. of all the previous ones as well. So mm-hmm. I said, like I said, focus on the viewpoint, the author's opinion. Just hold on to that. Another thing you can do is mm-hmm. caricature or exaggerate the different viewpoints being presented, make them a little bit ridiculous, and that might help it become a bit more engaging as well. Right. Those are helpful. Those are really helpful tips. I think what has helped me the most, like with the, um, with the classes and the sessions is like, they, we, we go through the passage. Like, so we go through the passage in depth and the instructor, the facilitator, they kind of break it down in pieces to where I'm like, oh, I didn't think of it this way, or oh, I didn't think to analyze it this way. And so 
it's the same with the science passions. The science passions are the ones I struggle with the most. And so I was that I was given advice like, okay, so when you're reading a science passage, know that it's not going to be, it's going to be like procedural. So it's going to like go in an order that's like kind of describing, you know, how, like, a, like how something gets applied. So if we're like talking about the passages talking about, you know, something regarding like earthquakes, and that was one of the passages, it was talking about like earthquakes and how it's like measured um, using like lichen. And so we literally went through the passage, like paragraph by paragraph, and I was able to see how like, oh, line by line, paragraph by paragraph, it kind of explains the procedure of how this like lichenometry is used. And I'm like, wow, I didn't realize that with reading comprehension passages, that science passages are structured that way. So it's like, now when I go in and I look at a science passage, I'm like reading for the procedure as opposed to like trying to find the author's main point of view. And that's helped me a lot on the reading comprehension passages. Fantastic. That's exactly the goal is to break it down as simply as mm -hmm. possible. Too often students are just kind of rushing through it, not really fully getting it. Yeah. So that review process, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Me. It was, it was me too, but that's why <laughs> the review process is so important because mm -hmm. it forces you to go mm -hmm. back in slowly and right. figure yeah. out exactly what gave you trouble. Right. I, so, and then another thing is like, I only want to be able to take this test one more time. So it's like, what can I do or what more can I do in addition to what I'm already doing to, I guess, get over it? Cause I'm like, right now I'm PTing like in the 160. So it's like, how do I get over this hump and maximize my score even more? Well, let me ask you this. What are you doing with regard to your, your review process? You're seeing it in class, so you have a, mm -hmm. a general idea of it. Are you applying it on your end in terms of are you writing something out? Like writing out the questions? No, writing out your review process in some kind of document or journal. So when you get something wrong oh. or have difficulty with something, mm -hmm. are you articulating it written down somewhere? Yeah, so I, I do that, and I definitely I keep track of all the um, answers I got wrong. And I'm wondering, because it's like, I do that, right? So I do the same process. So I look at the answer I got wrong. I explain like, okay, this is why I thought this answer was right. And then I go back and I say, okay, this answer was the correct answer and I explain why that was the correct answer. And I don't know how many times I have to do that in order for it to be effective because I sometimes still get the, I sometimes still get answers wrong, you know, regarding like the same question type, if it's like LR, you know, and it's like a weakened question. And it's like, I know, like, I know how to, we I know the answer choices, like if it's like a causal reason, right? If it's causal reason, reasoning and you have to weaken it. It's like, I know the four ways to weaken the question, but it's like some, I think I get caught up in the verbiage sometimes. And like, maybe I'm not fully understanding the stimulus because that's the only way you can get something wrong, right? Is when you don't fully understand the stimulus. And as, I think what I can do to improve that is in addition to like slowing down and making sure like I'm reading everything and I'm reading, you know, to understand as opposed to just reading to answer the question. Like, I think that will help. And I think it's a matter of practice and there's like no shortcuts to this, right? So there's not like a magical way I can, you know, automatically all of a sudden just be good at these question types and answering these questions unless I put in the work and do you know, the review process. But I'm wondering if you have any other review tips that I can implement. So I'm yeah, not absolutely. doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm glad you're recognizing, Akila, that this takes time, right? It's not going to mm -hmm. happen overnight. There are not any shortcuts. And let's say, for example, you said logical reasoning weekend. Now, when you got a logical mm -hmm. reasoning weekend question wrong, you might not have gotten it wrong or had difficulty with it because it was a weakened question in particular. It could have been something about that method mm -hmm. of reasoning in general, or it could have been the usage mm -hmm. of a word like unless, mm -hmm. or it could have been the conclusion being right. buried in the middle along with a sub-conclusion coming later. Mm -hmm. So it may not be that you're going to see the gains on mm -hmm. your next weakened question, but you may see gains down the line next time you encounter a logical reasoning stimulus containing the word unless or another question where there's a sub-conclusion right. going on somewhere. So it happens over time right. gradually as you, as you 
identify all the different things that might give you trouble. Mm -hmm. But some things come up less frequently, so it might be a while before you see it again. But when you see it, you'll get it the next time. Right. And then also I have, I do have another question. So I know a lot of people have been saying like, oh, if you want to um, like review on time sections, um, then it's good to use like PT 70s or like PT 60s and then reserve like PT 80s for like your timed, you know, review practice. And I'm wondering like what your take on that is and like what, like, should I be looking at prep tests before PT 50 or should I just be focusing on like the later um, prep tests in my review. Well, you said you're taking it. And in then August, also how right? many should I do? <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. So you're taking <laughs> August. So we're speaking now in early to mid June, you've got about two months and change till then. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't recommend spending a ton of time on everything prior to the PDs in the fifties, because you wouldn't want to do something in okay. the thirties and then never get to the seventies and eighties. So I'd say fifties and up mm-hmm. is probably a good way to go at this stage, two months out. I would also suggest, though, that maybe you find certain elements, certain questions from older exams, if you want to drill those in particular. For example, mm-hmm. if you want to work on curveball logic games, there are a lot of weird curveball logic games in the older exams. So you might go in targeted oh. just for those in particular. But the majority mm-hmm. of it, I'd keep for the 50s and up. And as for your okay. other question regarding how many, I recommend going into test day with at least 10 practice tests under your belt. But if you, yeah, at least 10, at least 10. But if you want to do more, that's fantastic. Speaking now, 10 would be roughly one exam a week. But if you Mm -hmm. wanted to do more and had the space, you could do two a week, as long as you're allowing enough time for detailed review of those exams. That is a very, okay, good. Because I was trying, that was like the one thing I was trying to figure out, like what to do, like how many should I do and what would be productive and effective without like overwhelming myself because I also work full time. Like I work in accounting and that's like easily 60 hours a week during a busy season. So it's like, how can I balance that out while still making sure I have enough time to dedicate to my study schedule and I'm able to study effectively. So yeah, okay, one a week or like two a week, that's, I can do that. Fantastic, yeah, and make sure there are four sections, I not three, paused. of course. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say, make sure there are four sections, not three because right. oh, they're yeah, adding back in. That experimental in August. Yeah. And it's an experimental LR, right? It's always LR. Right? No, it so could be. Still... No, no, no. It could be anything. It could be Wait, any of. What? Yeah. It could be any Why of. Did the... I thought it was just LR. That's because the old published prep tests contained a second scored logical reasoning section. But on test day, oh. it could be any of games, reasoning, or reading comp, and it could appear anywhere in the exam. Steve, I didn't know. <laughs> I'm, glad we, I'm glad we talked. I'm glad we talked. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I'm sitting here like doubling like LR questions because I'm like, this is the one I'm going to be tested on more. Oh, okay. Well, it's good that you're, you're no, it, it, I know it's, I know it's a shock. I, I know a lot of other people are probably confused about that as well, <laughs> but it's good you're learning now. We're still more than two months out. So change it up. You've gotten plenty of LR practice. You can now start mixing in. Right. Games. You can start mixing in reading comp- and like reading comprehension for sure. Reading comprehension. Oh my god. Okay. But it won't count though. It won't count. You might do double. It you won't might count. do double reading comp. But hey, that second one won't count. If I do double reading comp, I think I'll go insane. <laughs> well, let's take the next two months to make it so that you won't even mind when you encounter. Yeah, I know that you'll have it. Okay, so that definitely means I'm gonna start. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Wow. Thank you for telling me. I did not know. Of course, Akila. Of course. I have a whole FAQ on mm-hmm. the four section LSAT. So take a look at that. Okay. It's currently linked on the page. And we also mm-hmm. have it in the course. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Those are my only questions. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad we connected, yeah. Akila. Glad we clarified yeah, the experimental here. section thing as well. So you can you can add that yeah. into the mix going forward and just keep <laughs> at it, keep showing up and reach out if you need anything mm-hmm. at all. I'm glad to help. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Steve. Of course. Have a good one. Bye. You too. Bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.